All right, here we're going to take a look at the binary search and see how it basically works. Um, work with the same data we did with the linear search, except now the data has to be sorted for the binary search, so I already sorted the data. Using three colors to indicate the three indexes that we'll be working with, the blue would be the first, uh, orange would be the last index, and the calculated middle would be the green. So the first one's done. Right? It starts at index zero and goes up to index six. The midpoint would be a three, and hence the 10 is highlighted. Right. So let's say we're searching for that 18. So the first thing we would compare is the search value, which is 18 to the 10, which is the middle element. It is not the element we're looking for, but this value is in the middle is less than the value that we're looking for. So the value, if it exists, would be to the right of this middle. All right. So that means then that the first, which is currently the index 0, we need to change to become index 4. And then the last will still remain to be the 23 here at the end, and it will remain to be the orange color that we're using. Now we need to calculate the new middle. All right, again, that is the addition of the 4, the low index, plus the high index, which is still the 6. That divided by 2. Oops, oops, forgot my equal sign in front of that. We'll take care of that. All right, and that gives us index 5. So this becomes the new middle, and in this case, that just happens to be the value that we're actually looking for. All right. So the search terminates right then. All right. So comparing that to the linear search, to find that 18, it would have taken comparisons to a 1, the 4, the 7, the 10, the 15, and then finally the 18. So six comparisons, where the binary search did it in two compares. So it's a small data set, small savings, but you increase the amount of data that's in here and you'll start seeing much bigger savings. So that was a simple one to find. If we back up now and work on the other side, let's say we're searching for uh, number one. All right. So we still start with the 10 at index 3 as the first comparison. It's not the thing we're looking for, but the value we're looking for is less than the middle so we only want to look on the left hand side so the lowest or the first still remains at index 0 but now our uh, high index for the array that we're going to hold the part of the array we're going to look at is the middle the current middle minus 1 so it's be at index 2 and that would be highlighted now with the orange All right. so we have to calculate a new middle again using that same formula it would be the low, which is 0, Oops, put parentheses in there, 0 plus the high, which is the 2, divided by 2, and that gives you a 1, so our new middle is at index 1. Oops, wrong highlighting there. Alright, so that would be now in our green as our new middle. We do a comparison there. That is not the value we're looking for. The value we're looking for is a 1, so it's less than that, so we have to look to his left. So again, now ignoring all that. Right. So we're looking to his left. What changes right, is going to be the, the first is still this 0. Right. We're not changing that. Right. Now what changes is the high. It's the middle, minus 1, which is also 0. So now this becomes both the first and the last. Can't put two colors in there, so it's the whole thing. The middle is 0 plus 0, divided by 2 is 0, so that is our middle also. So eventually this does become our middle. And we compare. We were looking for the 1. It is the 1. We found it. So it took three compares here with the binary search to find that one, where the linear search would have done one compare. So again, with smaller data, the linear search will be more effective. In larger data, the binary search becomes more efficient because it eliminates half the data pool on each compare.